What's up everybody, JJ Shankles, the Goat Toasters here, back with another review. You've already read the title, you know why you're here. This is the 14 millimeter Cine DS for the Nikon F mount. It's an F mount, I'm gonna be using it with this with the FTZ adapter to be able to use it on the Nikon Z6. That's what I film all these videos on. Here it is, 14 millimeters in all its glory. It's such a large bulb of glass there. Um, and this lens hood doesn't even come off because it needs something to protect all that glass in there. Such a wide lens, but it's so much fun to use. I bought this one specifically for a couple reasons I wanted to outline. First, 14 millimeters prime. 14 millimeter, amazingly wide. Previously, this had been our wide sort of zoom. It's an 18 to 35, f 3.5 to f 4.5. So at 18 millimeters, the widest it would go would be only an f 3.5. But then if you zoomed into a 35 millimeter, you would get it down to only f 4.5. So it's not a very fast lens, but it is a zoom. Great versatility to this lens. 18 millimeters on full frame is very wide and 35 gets you a good amount of zoom to it. So it can be a very wide, but also a usable 35, very usable lens, especially if you're shooting in situations where it's gonna be bright anyways. So you're not gonna use that super shallow depth of field. If f 4.5 is good enough for you, and if you can step it down a couple steps, you get some really good shots out of here. At the widest, it's not the sharpest lens out there. Also, the size was a big benefit for this lens over some of the 14 to 24 lenses are just huge. It's a massive lens that you can't put filters on. This one, oh yeah, you can put filters. It's 77 millimeter filters on here, which we can also use for the 70 to 200 telephoto lens. A lot of information, a lot of numbers here. But this one, look at the size comparison. It is so much shorter. It is about the same width. The Rokinon does fit inside the other one with the lens hood on. So size is a big benefit to this one. Being able to pack this in a bag is super easy. Since it is a prime, you also get a wider aperture here. It goes down to an f 2.8, which is actually a T 3.1. So it's measured in T stops, which T stops are a measured value, whereas F stops are a calculated value. This is as far as I understand it. F stops are a calculated value on how wide the diameter of the aperture is to the focal length of the lens. It's a calculation they do. So that will calculate how wide of a depth of field you're gonna get in your shots. But it doesn't calculate with how many pieces of glass in here, how much light is actually transferred through the lens. So a T-stop is a measure value. They shine a light in the one side and they measure how much light comes out the back. And then you get your T-stops of how much light is actually passing through the lens at various apertures. So that way, if you take a T3.1 lens, put it on, you're filming, you take it off, you put another lens on there, set it at T3.1, you're gonna get the same light hitting the sensor on the camera. That way you don't have to adjust exposure, ISO, filters, whatever else, you don't need to adjust it at all. But where you might get a different depth of field with T-stops, you're gonna get the same brightness in this shot. Currently, since I only have one Cine lens, that doesn't really help me to be able to switch between lenses, since all my other lenses are in F-stops. T-stops on only one lens isn't as useful, but I do know this is an equivalent of an F2.8. Another reason I like 14 millimeters at F2.8 is that wide depth of field, which makes manual focus really easy. Instead of me telling you, let me show you. And there we go. Nice wide aperture. Done with that 24 to 70. This is 14 millimeters. Welcome to 14 millimeters. I didn't move the camera at all. This is how wide it is. You get so much surroundings. You get such beautiful distortion. You can do things where my hands look huge right now because they're so much closer and farther out since I look tiny in the frame. You get so much in the shot and it's, I think, just beautiful how much you can do with this lens that you can't artificially do. You can digitally zoom a lot of lenses to get a farther focal distance. You can't artificially widen the lens to get this much range. Since, since I do a lot of me sitting here talking, I can just simply manually focus it on me and then I just sit here and don't move. If I move back or move forward a lot, it's not gonna track my face. But with this being 14 millimeters, you get such a wide depth of field. I think the hyperfocal distance at f2.8 is somewhere around eight feet. So that means if you focus on eight feet, you get everything from somewhere around seven to infinity will be in focus. And if you step it down, that gets even better of just everything's gonna be in focus in general. You don't get that beautiful shallow depth of field, but I'll use another lens for that. I've only used this lens off and on for about a month now. 
So I'll probably have to do an update next year to see how much I really use this lens after a year because manual focus is an extra step in shooting your videos. You do have to manually set things and make sure you don't move or when you're filming things, you're physically deciding what you want to be focused at that moment. But so far, I think it's a good extra step to make you really slow down and realize what you want in focus and changing the focus is a very hands-on step. But that about wraps up this review. Really enjoy using this lens so far, but we'll see how it goes in the future. I do like that I got a great deal on it buying it used where I could resell it right now and sell it for the same price I bought it for and be out no money. That's a great part of buying on the used market. There's so many great lenses out there that other people want to sell and you could buy them, use them, resell them. If you're good to your lenses, they don't depreciate all that much. Unless they're brand new lenses that just came out, they're gonna have some general depreciation over the first year or so. But this is an old lens and I can resell it for the same price I bought it for right now. If you guys have any questions about using Cine lenses on your Nikon system, let me know in the comments down below. Or if you use them on your own cameras, let me know what you think about them. I've really enjoyed using 14 millimeters. And if you subscribe down below, you'll see it in all my other videos that I happen to use this lens in. Anyway, I hope you guys have an amazing day out there. Make sure you're staying safe. Make sure you're washing your hands a lot. It's 2020 after all. And I'll see you on the next one. Go Toaster out.